Good morning, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Since moving into the green level of our COVID-19 recovery plan on July 30th, New Brunswick has seen a surge in COVID-19 infections. More people moving around provides more opportunity for the virus to find new hosts. So this is no surprise. La santé publique est préoccupée par l'augmentation récente du nombre de cas dans l'ensemble de la province. In particular, we are concerned by the number of cases where we can't establish a link to other existing cases. As of today, 13 cases in Zone 1, which is the Moncton area, and one case in the Fredericton area, have been classified as community transmission. This means we can't est directly establish who the individual got their infection from. While our case numbers are higher than they have been in many months, the course of disease and how we need to respond to it has changed with the vaccine rollout. Comparativement au mois d'hiver, moins de personnes infectées sont, uh, ont besoin de soins médicaux intensifs. Le 10 février, um, il y avait 175 cas actifs de COVID-19 au Nouveau-Brunswick, soit le total relativement semblable à celui d'aujourd'hui, qui est de 157. On February 10, 2021, New Brunswick had 175 active cases of COVID-19. That's close to today's number of 157. On that day, there were six New Brunswickers in hospital, of whom two required intensive care. Alors, l'actuel, quatre personnes sont hospitalisées dans la province en raison de COVID-19, mais aucune d'elles n'a besoin des soins intensifs. En fait, Aucune personne n'a été admise à l'unité de soins intensifs en raison de, de la COVID-19 depuis le mi-juin. La recherche des contacts continue de contribu contribuer grandement au contrôle de la propagation de la COVID-19. Our contact tracing teams continue to do an excellent job, and I would say arguably one of the best in the country, and that is helping to limit the spread of the virus. The current surge in cases is centered in Zone 1, which is Moncton and southeastern New Brunswick. We have found that cases in other regions are linked to the Zone 1 area. The most significant difference between today and six months ago is the widespread availability of safe and effective vaccines. À l'heure actuelle, plus de 74% des citoyens de Nouveau-Brunswick sont complètement protégés contre le COVID-19. Il s'agit de, de, là d'une bonne nouvelle. Je tiens à remercier toutes les personnes qui, ont, qui se sont retroussées les manches pour se protéger et protéger leur famille, leur collectivité et les personnes qui ne peuvent pas être vaccinées. Without the protection afforded by the vaccines and the tireless dedication of our public health contact tracers, our current situation would be significantly worse. We would have more cases of serious illness, more people in hospital, and more people requiring intensive care. And our restrictions would have had to have been more stringent than they are now. Because of the protection provided by vaccination and contact tracing, public health was comfortable with moving to the green level, given that the trend in vaccine uptake at that time was positive. We all needed to get on with our lives and begin living with COVID-19. Now, of course, we are adjusting. Vaccine uptake is changing and cases are changing. Le virus demeure cependant parmi nous. Les conseils et les recommandations de santé publique continuent de s'appliquer, même si l'arrêt obligatoire n'est plus en vigueur. If you are not yet fully vaccinated, your health remains at risk from COVID-19. Une personne non vaccinée qui contracte le COVID-19 est davantage à risque de devenir gravement malade et de ressentir des répercussions à long terme. Public Health continues to urge every eligible New Brunswicker to become fully vaccinated as soon as possible. Vaccination is the surest and most effective protection we have against COVID-19. Today, Public Health is reporting eight new cases of COVID-19 in New Brunswick. Six are in Zone 1, the Moncton region. Three of these are contacts of previously confirmed cases, and three are under investigation. 
And there are two cases in Zone 3, the Fredericton region. Both of these are travel related. There are now 157 active cases of COVID-19, 15 recoveries, and four New Brunswickers in hospital. Aujourd'hui, la santé publique annonce qu'il y a huit nouveaux cas de, de la COVID-19 au Nouveau-Brunswick. Il y a six cas dans la zone 1, soit la région de Moncton. Trois de ces cas sont des contacts d'un cas déjà confirmé, alors que les trois autres font l'objet d'une enquête. Il y a aussi deux cas dans la zone 3, soit la région de Fredericton, qui sont tous les deux liés à un voyage. Il y a présentement 157 cas actifs de COVID-19 dans la province. 15 personnes sont réétablies, alors que quatre citoyens de Nouveau-Brunswick sont hospitalisés après avoir contracté le virus. The majority of these new cases continue to be among those who are not fully vaccinated, whether by choice or because they are not yet able to receive a vaccine. If you are not vaccinated, there are steps you can take to protect your own health and the health of those around you. I strongly recommend that New Brunswickers play, pay close attention to the public health practices learned during the pandemic. Wash your hands frequently and thoroughly. Maintain two meters between yourselves and others wherever possible. Stay home if you don't feel well. Watch for symptoms of COVID-19 and get tested if symptoms emerge. Tous ces couches de protection demeurent également importants pour, les per pour tous les personnes de Nouveau-Brunswick. Given our current case numbers and, all the and the evidence of community spread, I urge all New Brunswickers to continue to wear a mask when they are in indoor public spaces. It is true that masks are not currently required by law as they were earlier in the pandemic. But remember, we're dealing with a communicable disease that can and will spread quickly among the unprotected. If you want to protect yourself and your family against COVID-19, your best option is to get vaccinated. If that is not your choice or that option is not available to you, my advice is that you continue to wear a mask and limit your contacts as much as possible. To stop the spread of a communicable disease like COVID-19, it is important that we're able to apply multiple layers of protection to slow the spread of the virus. Les vaccins constituent un moyen de protection important pour prévenir la propagation de la COVID-19. Nous devons cependant avoir recours des, aux autres outils à notre disposition, comme les masques, pour protéger la population aussi efficacement que possible. It is also critically important that everyone cooperates in helping us to trace the course of this disease. Si un représentant de santé publique communique avec vous, veuillez répondre à votre téléphone, être respectueux, répondre avec franchise et politesse aux questions posées par les membres de notre équipe de recherche de contact et suivre les, di les directives qu'ils vous donnent. And I'll repeat that in English. Um, if a public health representative or team member contacts you, please answer your phone, be respectful, respond frankly and with, uh, with politeness to the questions posed, and follow the directives that are given to you. Isolation of those who are infected or could be infected remains a key element in our strategy to limit the spread of COVID-19. Please note that public health directives will depend in part on each person's vaccination status. Unvaccinated or, or are not fully vaccinated people exposed to the virus will have more restrictions placed on them than vaccinated people who are in the same situation. Currently, there are more than 1,000 New Brunswickers who have isolated themselves to help us limit the spread of this disease. Je les remercie tous de faire ce sacrifice pour protéger leur famille, leur collectivité et les personnes non vaccinées. La COVID-19 est toujours parmi nous et nous commençons tout juste à apprendre à vivre avec ce virus. Yes, we have seen an increase in cases over the last month, but we're not seeing the concurrent increase in serious illness and hospitalizations that would jeopardize our healthcare system at this time. Le rythme de vaccination a ralenti, mais il semble, semble s'accélérer à nouveau, au fur et à mesure que les familles reviennent des vacances 
et se prépare à la rentrée scolaire. Cette constatation me donne espoir. Tous les jours, de plus en plus de citoyens de Nouveau-Brunswick reçoivent le vaccin contre le COVID-19. Given the highly contagious nature of the new variants of COVID-19, we need to get as many New Brunswickers as possible vaccinated as soon as this can be done. Pour contenir l'augmentation du nombre de cas de COVID-19 que nous vivons actuellement, nous devons continuer à travailler ensemble. You can contribute by getting vaccinated and encouraging those close to you to get vaccinated. You can contribute by helping us trace and contact potential cases. You can contribute by wearing a mask if you have not yet fully received a vaccine series. We have come a long way by working together. And it's one of the features of our response um, to COVID-19 in New Brunswick. Please continue to do this for your own sake and for your fellow New Brunswickers. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, bonjour. Over the past month, we have all been adjusting to life in green. We've been learning how to live our lives as normally as possible with the continued presence of COVID-19. Some New Brunswickers have embraced this transition, but I know for some, it has not been easy. The good news is that our vaccine rate is still steadily increasing. As of today, 74.2% of eligible New Brunswickers have received both doses of the vaccine, and 84% have received their first dose. As of this morning, we have administered an impressive 1.1 million doses of vaccine in New Brunswick. We're also beginning to see a promising rise in the number of people booking vaccination appointments. Over the past few weeks, an average of 6,000 New Brunswickers have booked an appointment. But this week, that number has jumped to around 8,000 appointments. As we head into the fall, I'm hopeful that even more people will choose to get vaccinated. We know that this is absolutely the best tool we have to protect ourselves and our loved ones. The new school year begins soon. And as Minister Cardi announced last week, we have a plan in place that will allow students to have, a, to have as close a normal school experience as possible. I want to ask parents to do their part to ensure the school year goes smoothly. That means ensuring you and any adults in the household are fully vaccinated. And if you have children who are 12 and older, including children who will be turning 12 before the end of 2021, please book an appointment to have them vaccinated if you have not already done so. As of today, 59.4% of youth aged 12 to 19 have been fully vaccinated and 73.8% have received their first dose. We are on the right track, but we hope to see those numbers continue to rise in the weeks ahead. There are appointments available throughout the province and you can schedule yours by contacting a pharmacist directly or by visiting www.gnb.ca slash book a vaccine for an appointment at a Horizon or a Vitalite network clinic. We are continuing to offer walk-in clinics where no appointment is required. For example, tomorrow, Friday, August 27th, Extramural and Ambulance New Brunswick is offering a Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine clinic for first or second dose at Parley Beach in Shediac between 2 p.m. and 6 p.m. Additional walk-in and mobile clinics will continue to be posted on the GNB COVID-19 website. We should all feel encouraged that nearly 75% of our eligible population is now fully vaccinated. But with the presence of variants in our province, we must aim above and beyond that goal. The more people get vaccinated, the more we will all be protected from COVID-19. We know that being fully vaccinated provides a high degree of protection against this virus. As Dr. Muick explained, the vast majority of people who have tested positive for COVID-19 since the beginning of July were not fully vaccinated. 
Those New Brunswickers who have been vaccinated can access their immunization record through My Health NB. If you have already been vaccinated and do not have a My Health NB account, you can receive a registration code by booking an appointment at a Horizon or a Vitalite clinic. At the appointment, staff will verify your identity and your NB Medicare number and will give you a registration code that you can use at myhealthnb, uh, myhealth.gnb.ca. Your paper record of immunization is still your official record, so please keep it in a safe place. Keep a copy, take a picture of it if you haven't already done so. I want to thank everyone who has done their part by getting vaccinated already. You are playing a very important role in getting us through this pandemic and making it possible for us to return to a more normal life. As our vaccination rate continues to increase, we will all feel more comfortable living with our lives in a more free way. Learning to live with COVID-19 is a process. This is something we will get through as we have throughout the pandemic by working together. Thank you, merci. Thank you, Minister, and thank you, Dr. Muick. Merci de ministre, Dr. Muick. We'll now proceed with questions from the media. Each reporter will have one question and one follow-up. You have the right to pose your question in the official language of your choice, and please ensure your microphones are placed on mute. Nous allons maintenant procéder aux questions des journalistes. Vous avez le, le droit de poser vos questions dans la langue officielle de votre choix. Chaque journaliste aura une question puis un suivi. Uh, veuillez vous s'assurer de déactiver le son de vos micros. Uh, Laura Brown, CTV. Hi, uh, either of you hopefully can answer this. Um, wondering if parents should be concerned, specifically in the Moncton area and those who have kids under the age of 12, about sending their child back to school next week, um, specifically again in that, that area. So as was uh, communicated last week, there is a plan for uh, the opening of schools that incorporates uh, protective measures into the daily routines of kids at school. Um, we do have to keep in mind, as we have throughout the pandemic, that um, there are various factors and priorities that need to be taken into consideration. Obviously, infection control and, um, and the protection of children from that perspective is paramount. Uh, that being said, of course, we also want children to get a good education. We also want children to have good physical, mental, social, and emotional health. Um, so all of these things are, are considered, but we continue to watch the situation very closely, and we will be working with our partners at EECD and uh, continuing to um, evolve our evidence as needed, or as our advice as needed. And I know that it was released yesterday, but can either of you tell us the breakdown of the Alpha versus Delta variants currently in the province, including the cases today? We have both Alpha and Delta variant in the province currently, um, and both of them are known to be more transmissible than the original version of the virus. So um, it is important for us from the perspective of understanding the dynamics of transmission um, but in terms of what people do on a day-to-day -day basis and um, what protection uh, measures they take, um, there's not a big difference in that respect. So um, it is, regardless of whether it's Alpha or Delta in your local area, it's really important for you to pay attention to public health measures. Can you break down the numbers back? I probably do. I'm just I'm I'm trying to find them second. as well. I know I saw, that. I saw them. There were four cases of Delta in the province, if my memory serves me correct. Yeah, I don't see it here. Yeah. We'll get yeah, that we'll for get you, back to you with the numbers. Yeah. Thanks. Natalie Sturgeon, Global. Hi, um, so we had, we sort of talked to, to experts who said that disavowing masks and sort of getting rid of the COVID protocols was the wrong move uh, right now as we enter the fourth wave. Um, what do you make of that? And, and what will you be doing to sort of protect New Brunswickers as we go forward? And will you reinstate a mask mandate? So as, as I alluded to with the school question, um, this is an evolving process. Um, this is an evolving situation. Um, and we are always looking to create that fine balance between what we need to do to control the pandemic and 
various potential un unintended consequences of um, the restrictions that are put in place. So um, all of that is an ongoing discussion and as you can see, situation can change very quickly. Uh, so we continue to look at that on an ongoing basis, which is why oh, the messages you're hearing now are um, different than what you would have heard two weeks ago. Um, all options are on the table um, and continue to be discussed. And so um, as various measures need to be put in place, we'll be um, not only discussing them, but communicating them to the public. Um, in, so we, and as Dr. Muick says, we've, um, you know, every single day we still continue to have the pulse of COVID-19 at our fingertips, and that's really important. We will always make our decisions based on the, on the, on the best available data on any given day. The, um, yeah, I look in this room and I see um, no less than uh, a half a dozen or more out of the nine people sitting in front of me um, that are wearing masks. The public has grown to understand through our COVID reality that they have the opportunity and they have the power to protect themselves against COVID-19. The vaccinations are, of course, our, I think our biggest tool in the toolbox, but we know that wearing masks in indoor public spaces is a smart thing to do. We know that keeping your distance and washing your hands frequently are other smart things to do. And our public has been educated to that. And I still see people today, we wore masks walking in here today. So the, the, the fact is, is that our public has really learned and they know that we're transitioning to living with COVID. And, and um, you know, I would never say never, but we will evaluate it with the best data we have on any given day with the assistance of public, uh, public health. hospitalizations for now. Uh, Premier Pig said that would be something he would react to um, in terms of the emergency measures or restrictions. So are you considering that? Have you had any conversations about reinstating restrictions? So we have four hospitalizations. Absolutely, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be monitoring that. Um, but of course, look at the case count and how high it is. We don't have anyone in ICU. And so it, again, we will be making our decisions based on the best available data on any given day. Um, public health and, and, and government, um, you know, our cabinet were, have worked very, very well together, including with the cabinet committee. We knew this would be a tough summer. We knew with our human health resources, this was gonna be a tough summer and, and it has played out as we've been expecting. So um, what we need to do now is assure that, um, you know, we have, we take steps with the, with the solutions that could be before us. And so we're gonna be working very closely with our RHAs, with EM, uh, e, uh, Extramural Ambulance New Brunswick, 811, um, our, our um, MBMS, our nurses associations and, and unions. All of us need to come together to work on the, on the solutions. Mm -hmm. Savannah? Um, this is for Dr. Um, so I just wanna clarify when you're And if not, what exactly, what exactly is that going to take if we have 14 community spread cases and four in hospital, which it is low, but that's obviously a severe illness in that case. Yes, it is a strong public health recommendation at this time. And as I mentioned, we're working at um, looking at all possible options in terms of reinforcing our messages, um, as well as um, encouraging as many people to get vaccinated as possible. So we're working at all of those initiatives concurrently to ensure that we provide the best possible options to New Brunswickers. Um, and just as a follow up to that, um, if that's your recommendation in school, should I mean, are, should we expect that students are also to wear masks in school now in classrooms as well? If that's a suggestion. So I would have seen last week um, in the school's plan, there's already um, provision for masks in common areas. Um, yeah, so we, we would be looking regionally to see if there's anything additional required. Um, it does indicate in the uh, schools plan that public health um, would do a risk assessment in individual areas or in individual, individual schools and we can uh, recommend additional measures if we feel that they're needed. Thanks Savannah. Jacques? Um, so we'll probably hit the 75% number in a few days and that number used to be threshold for lifting 
restrictions. Um, does that specific number mean anything from an epidemiological point of view? So there would have been um, early modeling that was done primarily based on the experience in the pandemic to, to that point, which was typically the tradi traditional version of the virus um, that would have suggested that 75% was a good target to aim for. Um, the modeling continues to evolve as, as does the situation. Uh, and of course, we have many more variants in play now than we would have um, not that long ago. And so um, our, as a result, our messaging has also evolved. Um, we do see modeling that suggests that higher vaccination rates are important in the context of the Delta variant, for example. Um, and so now our message is really, we want as many New Brunswickers as possible to get fully vaccinated. So if 75 specifically doesn't mean any change in terms of spread or herd immunity, why, why not put out a number that Well, the, I mean, the, I guess it's the same issue as we would have had with the 75, which is there's no um, magic bullet associated with that, that number or um, probably with any other number. Um, these are numbers that are based on modeling. Um, and this is a new disease with new d transmission dynamics. Oftentimes when we're able to establish a hard number for other um, vaccination coverage rates, say for measles or other, other diseases, that's based on um, a much longer period of experience with those diseases. Um, and so it, it does become a little bit easier to nail it down. Um, but for the purposes of um, public participation, I guess we just wanna make sure that people know we need as many of them to roll up their sleeves as possible. Thanks, Jack. Thank you. Uh, Isabel Arsenault, uh, Radio Canada. Uh, Hadil Ibrahim, CBC. Hi, can you hear me all right? Yeah. Great, thank you. Um, this is for Dr. Muick. You said the majority of cases are people who are unvaccinated either by choice or they have not been able to get vaccinated. Do you have a breakdown of how many people are the former and how many are the latter? And can you expand on what you mean by unable? Is it just age or are there more reasons? So, no, we wouldn't have a breakdown because um, we don't know the features of people that don't show up. Um, that being said, um, you know, there are people who, as we know, who don't um, get vaccinated f by choice. There are a limited number of people who may not be able to get vaccinated for medical reasons. Um, and then, of course, as you mentioned, there are people that are not able to get vaccinated um, because the vaccine has not been authorized in their age group. Do you have a follow-up, Hidil? Yes. Um, we know that vaccinated people are not less likely to contract the disease, but they're less likely to develop symptoms. So considering that and the 14 untraceable cases, how can we know how bad the spread really is? Like, do we, have we lost the ability to do that? So um, the evidence does continue to emerge. Um, we do find, of course, that there's significant um, decreased likelihood of getting severe disease, being hospitalized, uh, and, and dying of COVID if you've been vaccinated. Um, there also continues to be emerging evidence that people who are vaccinated are less likely to um, transmit disease if they do get a breakthrough infection. Um, so all of those pieces interplay in terms of um, the, the benefits of vaccination. Um, as far as, you know, whether we're um, in a more difficult position, um, obviously the, the, that when we start to have more uh, difficulty making linkages between cases, um, we, um, there's less direct advice that we're able to give to individuals, um, but which is why we're sending some messages in this manner as well now, which is really we want everybody to consider um, and follow public health advice um, so that we can get this under control. Thank, Thank you. you. Vicki Hogarth, CHOC-TV. Thank you. I'm just wondering about these the 14 new community transmission cases. Were any of those cases in people under 12 and have you seen an increase in people under 12 contracting COVID in recent months? 
Um, I don't have the breakdown of the 14 in terms of age group, um, but I can tell you that as a general trend, um, the, the c cases that were of COVID-19 that we're seeing are, are more likely to be younger. And when I say younger, I mean under 40. Um, but that's just in part a reflection of the uh, vaccine coverage rates by age group as well. We have our highest vaccine coverage in our elderly population, which is obviously important because they're also um, traditionally at highest risk of severe outcomes. Um, so in part because of that and in part because of, um, of coverage rates and uh, authorization by age group, we are seeing more uh, younger cases, yes. Do you have a follow-up, Vicki? My, my follow-up is just, uh, we're at 74.2% of the eligible population being fully vaccinated, but do we know what that percentage is overall in terms, are we looking at two-thirds of the population if we consider everyone, and should we be aiming for a higher number this fall with the Delta variant at play? Yeah, so um, most of the country follows eligible population when they're determining their vaccine coverage rates. Um, we have looked on several occasions about, on what that would look like if we use the total population. Typically, it does um, reduce the number by a bit less than 10%. So, for example, if we see 74% fully vaccinated, it would be somewhere in the, in the range of 65 to 60 six percent if we counted absolutely everybody in the province thanks vicky tom bateman brunswick news uh good morning can you hear me yeah i can hear you great uh hi minister shepherd um the federal liberals made a point of criticizing saskatchewan's private mri clinics mm -hmm. Uh, calling it, you know, a trend towards the privatization of health care. They told me they're intent on enforcing a, a federal policy that could see health transfer deductions uh, to provinces be clawed back in the coming years. Uh, do you know what this could mean uh, for New Brunswick and how entities like the Moncton MRI Clinic or maybe even, you know, nurse practitioners practice, practicing outside of the RHAs could, could affect uh, what New Brunswick receives? Thank you. Can I just clarify, because I was tied up with a family funeral yesterday, so I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm up to, so are you telling me the, the federal liberals are saying that they don't want to fund private clinics? I'm sorry, I, I, I can't really hear you. Can you, can you sorry, I, so what I said was, uh, Tom, I, I, just to understand the question, are you, are, you, are you telling me that the federal liberals have announced they don't want to fund private clinics? No, they don't want to fund them. Uh, in fact, they would. They intend to claw back uh, health transfer funding uh, in provinces where these private clinics are operating. Is what they told me. I understand. Um, I think I understand what you're asking me. So, I, I guess I would say that it it pretty much looks like the height of hypocrisy since they've already withheld funding to New Brunswick for pri funding private clinics, for not funding private clinics. So I think they. Um, they need to look themselves in the mirror and ask them what their policies really are going to be. Tom, do you have a follow-up? I do, on another topic. Um, I heard this morning that there's a meeting planned uh, between government officials and, and private colleges and, and post-secondary schools uh, kind of regarding the health measures in place there. Uh, will public health recommend mandatory vaccines uh, for, for people involved with those institutions? Uh, and, and, and if so, why hasn't it happened yet, given the changes we saw last week with public universities? Thank you. What, um, I'm, I'm going to go uh, speaking on some anecdotal information I have, but not. Um, I won't say that I've had a full conf confirmation and briefing from Petal on this. So, so let me just say that um, with, with the government of New Brunswick's policy on um, vaccinating GNB, you know, asking GNB employees to choose between vaccination or uh, testing policies, um, the universities, I think, I think all of our universities and institutions in New Brunswick are now pretty much on board with, um, with accepting uh, that they want to have a, the similar policy. So um, we may have to confirm that 
for you, uh, Tom, but I, but I believe that um, um, if there is a meeting taking place, that it will be centered around GNB's policy that we just uh, brought forward, and um, I think that they are all pretty much voluntarily following suit. Yeah, that's my understanding as well, Minister. And just to add, though, as well, that um, we've had regular um, connections between public health and our post-secondary institutions um, throughout the pandemic. Um, and so um, this would probably be following um, regular communication because we do, they are an important partner um, in our response. And I think, though, I, I think I'm including those, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Jacques, that um, that I believe they're all following suit. So we need to get that confirmed because I, I didn't know that there was a meeting happening this morning. Um, it's probably being managed through PEDAL in that regard and maybe with public health. But I think um, I, I'm not aware of any that haven't um, haven't indicated they would they would be heading in this direction. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Tom. Alexandre yeah, thanks, everyone. Alexandre Boutreau, Lacadie like Nouvelle. Uh, no, on Okay. I can hear good here. Oui, c'est correct. All right. Um, je vais essayer de parler clairement. Um, le Premier ministre avait dit la semaine dernière que uh, le gouvernement allait demander aux entreprises aussi d'obliger la vaccination pour leurs employés, leurs clients, puis qu'il espérait que les entreprises allaient uh, uh, emboîter le pas au gouvernement. Um, est-ce que vous avez plus de détails là-dessus? Uh, quand est-ce que vous allez demander aux entreprises d'obliger de, la vaccination? Alors, c'est par rapport à l'initiative fédérale, s'il vous plaît? Pardon? Tu as dit que c'est par rapport à une, une directive fédérale pour leurs employés? Non, c'est par rapport à ce que le premier ministre Higgs a dit la, la semaine dernière. Il a dit, ben, que, quand il a annoncé que les, euh, la fonction publique euh, devrait être vaccinée ou subir des tests réguliers. Il a aussi mentionné que les entreprises, euh, que le gouvernement a aussi demandé aux entreprises d'objet de, de la vaccination. Euh, donc, qu'est-ce que vous pouvez me dire par rapport à ça? I think I could speak to that, perhaps. Um, I, I believe that um, as GNB has taken our steps, there has been I believe there has not been a directive to businesses in the community. What I do think is happening are conversations about GNB's steps and then how that might how that might transition into the business community. We know that in other provinces, I believe some businesses are being given directives to, to ask for, for vaccinations, but I, I can't speak to that and confirm it for you. Um, at this time, we are, we are focused on GNB and uh, the institutions and third parties that work with GNB. Atun Suivi, Alexandre? Oui. Um, quand est-ce que vous allez pouvoir clarifier un peu les, les détails de ce, cette, cette vaccination obligatoire-là? Le, le premier ministre avait dit qu'il qu allait clarifier les, les détails plus tard. Um, où est-ce que vous en êtes dans la, la préparation de, des détails de, de ce plan-là, par exemple, pour, pour les foyers de soins? So there was a directive sent out even this morning by our chief clerk of the executive council, Cheryl Hansen, um, and to uh, and uh, head of the public service and the vaccination policy to all GMB employees this morning. Um, it clarifies the um, the the uh, the policies for current employees, future employees, and uh, and I believe even third party, yes, on-site vendors, suppliers, contractors, and volunteers. Um, that's why this is a very comprehensive uh, mandatory vaccine and or testing uh, policy. We, we know that, um, you know, we need to protect our children that can't be vaccinated and, and any, anyone else in, in community who, who at this time cannot be vaccinated. And we know that the highest number of vaccinated population we have, the better our communities are going to be for it. And so um, that, that clarification went out today. Merci. Travis Fortnum, Global. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Cool. Uh, so my first question is for Minister Shepard. Uh, so we're hearing of ICU closures in Campbellton due to staffing shortages. And 
staffing shortages seems to be a problem in the healthcare system. We keep hearing about this summer. So I'm wondering if you could speak to what the Department of Health is doing specifically to fix this problem. Well, as you know, this is not a um, this is not a problem that's happened overnight. This has been a long-standing issue that's been coming, accumulating. We spoke at the beginning of summer that this was going to be a, a very hard summer. It is coming to fruition. So we um, we absolutely are working with our partners with um, Vitalite, Horizon, Extramural Ambulance, New Brunswick, 811, the Nurses Union, the New Brunswick Medical Society, to bring all these partners together to start um, to start really focusing on the solutions that are going to have to happen. And um, some of this will be conveyed in the health plan. Some of the, this is is um, is being put into action every single day within the networks. It is um, it is regrettable that um, some programs need to be need to be temporarily um, temporarily halted um, in support of other things like emergency rooms um, and making sure that we have strong personnel there to support uh, ERs. But the um, the fact is, is that the, you will be seeing um, you will be seeing measures of uh, and opportunities of solutions coming forward in the very near future. Travis, do you have a follow up? Yes, I do, and I'm not sure who wants to take this one. But uh, again, about Campbellton, this is a region and a public health zone that uh, hit hard in previous waves of the virus, and it still hasn't ca caught its breath, so to speak. We're constantly hearing we're on the cusp of a fourth wave. Can, this, can Zone 5 afford to go without its ICU right now? Well, again, we make our decisions based on the, you know, the, the, the available and, and current data of the day. And so um, we don't want any services uh, temporarily uh, you know, suspended. But the fact of the matter is it is far safer to make these decisions in advance of having a crisis happen and, uh, and not having the staff to fully support measures that need to be taken. Thanks, Travis. Maya Chabelle, Radio Canada. Oui, bonjour, est-ce qu'on m'entend comme il faut? Oui. Oui. Euh, donc, ma question est dans la même veine, c'est aussi par rapport à l'hôpital de Campbellton. Euh, Je voulais savoir, bon, par rapport à ce que vous avez dit, vous travaillez avec Vitalité. Est-ce que, donc c'est pour, c'est une question pour euh, la ministre Shepard. Est-ce que vous avez toujours confiance euh, en la direction de, du euh, réseau de santé Vitalité? I haven't any reason to, uh, to, to question the management of Vitalité. Um, this is a, this, we forecasted this would be a difficult summer. And, uh, and Vitalité has had to take steps, just like Horizon has had to take steps, in order to ensure the safety of uh, our health human resources and the community. And so as services must be suspended in a temporary basis to get through our, our uh, human health resource crisis, then they, they must need to do that. We can't have questions in community be about whether something is safe to operate. And so it is better to take these decisions in advance of having a crisis happen and, and us being in the middle of something that could have been prevented. Edwin Suivi, Maya. Oui, euh, donc ma, ma deuxième question, il y a le maire de Pointe-à-la-Croix au Québec qui disait inquiet pour, euh, pour une partie de sa communauté qui travaille à l'hôpital régional de Campbellton. Alors, je voulais savoir, est-ce qu'il y a des, des choses qui vont être mises en place pour protéger les employés? I, I don't think I understand the question. That the, by protecting the staff, I, I, I don't understand what you're alluding to. Euh, protéger finalement le, 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 ceux qui sont en, employés, est-ce qu'ils vont... Est-ce qu'il y en a qui vont perdre leurs heures? Est-ce qu'ils sont juste transférés vers d'autres unités? Si l'hôpital ferme un jour, qu'est-ce qui pourrait se passer aux employés, avec les employés? Ah, well, I, I see, I see what you're asking. So the measures that are being taken right now is to close the ICU. I believe in favor of putting, um, making sure that we have full complements of staff in the ER. So there's, there's no indication that there's any kind of layoff. We can't. We, we don't want to lose one staff member to, uh, to, to, to the system. And so um, we will be utilizing all staff. Merci, Maya. Bobby Jean Merci. McKinnon, CBC. Bob 
Bobby Jean, are you there? Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, yes, I can hear you. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, this is a question for both the minister and Dr. Muick, please. Um, the province's messaging has changed dramatically since we moved to green, asking people to make a lot of decisions for themselves while cases rise higher than in other Atlantic provinces. Uh, but we're in uncharted territory here and we still have people who are unable to get vaccinated, who are vulnerable and feeling abandoned. Uh, you know, who is looking out for them? What do you say to them? Um, as we've alluded to previously, we're continuing to look at the situation very carefully. Um, we are looking for New Brunswickers to work with us to um, implement as many public health measures and carefully follow public health directives as possible. Um, so we are continuing to look at all the possible options to ensure that all New Brunswickers, including those that are the most, most vulnerable, are um, protected in this situation. And I, I guess I can say is that any New Brunswicker who wants to get vaccinated can get vaccinated. And I know that that leaves a small portion of our population who, who cannot get uh, vaccinated perhaps for medical reasons. Um, and, and, and that is why our message must be, um, we need every single New Brunswicker who can be vaccinated to get vaccinated. This is about protecting you, your loved ones and your community. And so that, that message can't be any stronger than we've said it is proving out that vaccinations work and uh, and we need everyone to do it and with regards to anyone who's vulnerable they have also measures they themselves can take to protect themselves and we encourage that all of the options that they have on the table be utilized bobby jean do you have a follow-up yes i do thank you uh, there are still 60 schools with no integrated mechanical ventilation systems and the Department of Education says only some will get new ones next year, but it will be a multi-year project. What is public health position on this, both in terms of COVID and the heat waves we've been seeing this summer? So we've continued to work with education. Actually, um, we've had a ventilation working group that's been in existence for months, um, really throughout most of the pandemic. So we've continued to work on this issue and, and provide advice, um, look at the situation in the schools. Um, this is one of several layers of protection that can be applied, whether it's in schools or in other um, buildings that have ventilation. And so uh, we're looking to optimize as much as possible, um, understanding that it's just one piece of the puzzle. Thanks, Bobby Jean. Alex McDougall, Bangor Daily News. Alex, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can. Okay, hi. Uh, so my follow-up is, uh, sorry, just my first question is, um, with regards to the um, uh, the border between Maine and New Brunswick, Maine is currently seeing, um, an in Aroostook County in particular on the border, is seeing an increase of uh, COVID cases. We have about, um, I think, something like 190 uh, here in just Aroostook County alone. So is that something um, that is of concern uh, with regards to now that the border has reopened for American travelers or is because of the, are there any sort of concerns regarding that? Well, I, I think I think travel is is always a concern for us because we know it's our, our number one way of, of entrance into the province for any virus that we're dealing with. Um, and I think that's why we have the restrictions still that we have. We, we are expecting that those individuals who are traveling into our province are double vaccinated and 14 days post. Um, and you know, that's probably the best protection we could have. And we also have um, you know, policies in place for someone who might have one vaccination or, or no vaccinations. So I think that, that really it, it's about monitoring, it's about the travel registrations, and it's about implementing and enforcing policies that, um, that will keep the majority of our population safe. Mm -hmm. Alex, do you have a follow-up? Yes, yeah, sort of on a related note, um, with regards, I know the, with the border is still closed for uh, um, New Brunswickers to travel over the land border, but they could still, you know, 
uh, go to Halifax and maybe fly into the country. So is there any, are there any sort of advisories against um, the United States right now can be a high number of cases here? If there were any advisories, it would be done at the federal level. So we, um, we, we have to rely on, on their federal policies to, uh, to help us uh, control and protect the population. Okay. Thank you, Alex. So that concludes today's update. Thank you, everybody. Voilà la fin de notre mise à jour. Merci, bonne journée.